Welcome to the A16Z podcast. I'm Zal Bilamoria, and I'm joined by Preeti Kasaredi and Benedict Evans, who is just back from CES, and thought this might be a good week to discuss the Internet of Things, otherwise known as IoT. So, Benedict, what do you think uh, the state of the world is in terms of Internet of Things? Well, it's kind of at an interesting transition point, I think, because you saw dozens, if not hundreds, of people putting together packages of devices of various kinds that you can put in your home. It's like you could probably buy a thousand smart doorknobs and a thousand window sensors. And it's kind of at the point now where it's not really a technology question or even really necessarily a use case question. It's more kind of how do you get this to market? How do you explain to consumers why it might work? Which ones will they buy? How much should they talk to each other? Should you just buy a burglar alarm? set and the burglar alarm, you'll put the burglar alarm set up and then you might or might not do a thermostat and you might or might not do a home audio system or should they be kind of on some sort of standard that all talks to each other and what are the overlaps between the things that should and shouldn't talk to each other it's all about kind of route to market and kind of market positioning and you know what do you actually put on a shelf in home depot yep um I mean, it, it because, feels like- because the technology is all there yeah, it, it feels like, you know, you're talking about interoperability and standards, but it really does feel like there's hundreds, if not thousands of manufacturers that are building for IoT. But do we really have killer use cases yet and killer applications? That's a really good question. I mean, you mentioned that you think there's a lot of use cases, but what are the transformational use cases other than locks and potentially ovens? Um, I don't see turning on a light being that transformational. The way that I tend to look at this is that You know, our grandparents could have told you how many electric motors they owned. You know, there was one in the car and one in the refrigerator and one in the vacuum cleaner. And now there's probably a dozen in your wing mirror. And you've got dozens of different electrical devices in your home. But you didn't go out and buy electrical devices electric motors you bought a blender and you bought a coffee machine and you bought you know a microwave oven and you bought another vacuum cleaner and so on and so those are the th- those are what people end up buying they buy a solution to a particular problem and i think quite a lot of these devices are just adding a bit more intelligence or a little bit more sense to it some of them you know make obvious sense you know some sort of intelligent thermostat seems like well that will be the world it's going to be others like connected doorknobs or connected toilet flushes or all of these kinds of things are a little bit more up in the air they may work they may not um it is ultimately going to come down to how you communicate to a consumer whether you make these things work together and that is really the kind of the big kind of fuzzy question because you know you can kind of see that your tv might want to speak to your hi-fi you can kind of see that your electricity meter might want to speak to your thermostat. Um, Does your burglar alarm need to speak to your thermostat? Well, maybe. And if so, well, how would that work? And how does that translate into something you can buy in Home Depot? What are the logos? How How do you actually make that happen? Is that easy or is that complicated? Is that something that happens as a web service, as a business development deal between your power company and your alarm company? Or do you just buy two boxes in a store and they all just kind of work together when you load the smartphone app? So that's where all the kind of the, it seems to me that that's where in the part of the stack where the uncertainties are. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. You know, you know, people are actually buying products that they don't even realize are already connected, you know, with IoT connections, Bluetooth LE, whatever the technology is, you know, the Z-Wave versus the Zigbee uh, radio wave technologies. And, but it, it seems like how are all of these going to work together? And I think that I completely agree. It, it's leaving consumers kind of blinded with of figuring out how to, how to work these together. And I think what startups and companies like Samsung and LG and Google, what they have to think about is providing whole solutions for consumers, providing the entire smartphone or whatever, or pieces of a smartphone so that they can just buy it and that's it. Yeah, I think this is what's interesting contrasting um, Nest on the one hand with something like HomeKit or the various kind of industry exactly. standards consortia. Because what Nest is doing is they're giving you, the point of Nest isn't the thermostat, it's the route to market and the communication. It's like you buy a thermostat, that's a really useful, valuable thing. Then you make a, th- a smoke detector and you, may, you buy a security camera and you start building out slowly around that in ways that are really clear to communicate and clear for people to understand and it's clear how they're going to plug into everything and it just kind of works together now whether it actually does work or or not is another question but that's one strategy the other strategy is that every box in home depot has one logo on it and they all just supposedly work together Mm -hmm. but when you're actually standing in home depot and you're like okay i've got a whirlpool dishwasher 
and I've got a burglar alarm and they've both got this Internet of Things logo on. What does that even mean? Why is that any kind of meaningful benefit? Yeah, you, you mentioned Apple's HomeKit and it, that almost seems like a, like a complete head fake. I mean, if you actually go to their website, it's actually just a, a, a developer landing page with a couple of coming soon notifications. And so it feels like Apple may have just kind of announced it you know, late, you know, late last year and kind of gave everyone a little bit of a freeze and say, okay, let's wait till see what Apple is going to come out with in terms of HomeKit. Health kit, or even the Apple Watch in terms of the wearable. So it's kind of been interesting, like right, where you know, if everything has to come together and, and work together, it has to be interoperable. You have to almost imagine that mm -hmm. the two major mobile operating systems in Android and iOS will have something to say in this uh, in this matter. I, th right? I think that's right. I mean, the the kind of the elephant in the corner here is that the smartphone. Or the sort of it's maybe the wrong metaphor, but the smartphone is kind of the enabler for all of these things. Firstly, because the smartphone supply chain is creating the components that everything else is using, and secondly, because it's it's the network connection and it's the user interface for all of these things. And of course, it's you know you don't want to have a, a control screen on every window lock. You know, it makes a lot more sense if all this smart lives in in the smartphone. And so yeah, therefore the smartphone guys think that they should be controlling it. But I kind of keep coming coming back to this point. It's like you know, one of I think our colleague Mark made this point that do people, is it internet of things or is it just things connected to the internet <laughs> you know again do you buy a whole you know and, and some of the sort of visions of the internet of home and the mock-ups that you see with all these things talking to each other they remind me of a sort of westinghouse home of the future from the world fair in 1960 you know where there's a wall of your house that's got lots of knobs and dials on it and you pull something and something that's else right. happens and <laughs> i feel like you know maybe you're you know there's going to be a lot of different overlaps here like your tv and your will talk to your smartphone yes your thermostat might talk to your electricity meter might talk to your burglar alarm nobody's home turn the power off might not your connected car might talk to your thermostat they're almost home it's 50 degrees outside minus 50 outside turn the heating on 20 minutes before you yeah. get home that those kinds of edge those are the kind of the interesting tension points because it's where you can you can describe a scenario where absolutely your car should talk to your thermostat but you can also describe a scenario where uh, no the car doesn't talk to my thermostat i've just got the nest app on my phone uses geolocation to work out that i'm almost home or you know there's all these different ways that you might put that puzzle together yeah i, I think that one big question here is like is i know i have no doubt that you know the connected home Internet of Things is definitely going to be the future, and we're going to have a lot of technologies and applications. Uh, and I think there will just, be just like we have electric, hundreds of electric motors. Right, but, right. I think it's just a matter of like whether it's going to be this year or next year or the year after. Like I still feel like we're you know if you think about the Gartner hype cycle, I think we're probably still in the trough of disillusionment. We're still crossing the chasm, so to speak, in terms of getting into the early majority of actually where are we going to get the the real kind of uh, majority of, of users to get excited about actually putting these things together. And you know we have a you know uh, you know a couple of our portfolio companies for example let's just you know take for example like Home Depot has a good relationship with Quirky and so when you go into Home Depot today you can actually see the connected air conditioning unit you can see the connected this and that and they also have their relay station that kind of is the governing remote control for some of these things so they're starting to think about the packaging to your to your nest analogy from earlier they're starting to think about packaging these things together because they realize that this is a bigger problem than than they you know than they than they um, than, than the industry is actually leading it on because the industry if you actually if you step onto the CES showroom floor it's like oh wow this is the year there's so many applications there's so many devices every manufacturer from the old guard to the new guard are developing so, devices so the thing that occurs to me while you're, you're talking about this and I sort of I, I, I kind of mentioned earlier that you know it's because the smartphone supply chain is enabling this thing normally when these kinds of things arrive the way it works is you've got a really crappy product because the technology isn't ready. And then you've got a slightly less crappy product and a slightly less crappy product. And after about five years, the technology kind of catches up with the vision of the use case. What's happening with wearables and Internet of Things is it's the other way around. Because all the components have been created already for another industry, for the smartphone industry. It's like... You don't have crappy Internet of Things. Mm. You don't have crappy world. They're just there. They, mm. you know, and so people have been handed all these components and they're trying to work out what to do with them rather than having the vision of the great use case and then try and build the technology to fit it. It's like you've got yeah. the technology and now you're thinking, well, there must be something I can do with sensors in the home. Yeah. But, but what? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, no, I totally agree. All the building blocks are there. The sensors are there. The processing units are there. The communication like wireless, wired technology is there. It's just the use cases. So something that's transformational for a consumer um, is what I'm looking for because I think that will kind of 
uh, ignite the the IoT market. It will kind of finally prove to consumers that this is here and it's ready and they want it. Yeah. Um, and then you can kind of sell them on these nice to have services. That's right. I mean, you know, the key use cases around IoT, I think, you know, if you if you kind of boil it down, are you know, there's there's security, there's convenience, there's energy savings. And I think there's a cost savings element, which which I know that you're interested in this space in terms of like maybe there's an industrial or enterprise application here, which is much more kind of ready to go. And maybe BlackBerry, for example, just launched their new IoT platform. And BlackBerry is still synonymous with enterprise and security today. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on the industrial applications? Yeah, I mean, industrial... I think it's kind of hidden in the back. Everyone's excited about the consumer stuff, but that industrial side is also huge. For example, GE with their aviation, they have the smart jet engines, which you, the mechanics don't need, don't even need to check the plane once it lands, and that they just know if it needs maintenance or not. That saves a ton of time and ton of fuel and ton of just money for uh, aviation industry. And then there's like healthcare. Um, elder care monitoring for doctors, uh, that's a huge issue because if you have something like diabetes or, or heart, heart, uh, high blood pressure or whatever, you need continuous monitoring, and this kind of technology can really make differences for uh, doctors. So that's another industry that's kind of huge, uh, and there, I think it's already happening, and I'm really excited for that to take off. Let me, let me throw one more wrench in the equation here. So I think might, some people might classify Google Glass as an Internet of Thing device. But whether it's in a wearable or augmented reality, I think there are consumer as well as enterprise, enterprise applications. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on like whether you know, that kind of Internet, Internet IoT device is actually going to be able to take off? Well, I think there's a short-term and a long-term question here. I mean, the short-term, it feels like Google Glass is probably too limited in its capability and it's probably too intrusive in the form factor for anything other than an enterprise application. And I've seen a lot of really cool Google Glass enterprise applications um, in the consumer market, it, <clears throat> it clearly doesn't seem to work very well. I think there's a kind of a longer-term story here around watches, which seemed like a better way of having that ambient screen, maybe, than something that's kind of clamped onto your face. Um, yeah, but, it seems uh, like glass is something for you know professions that you don't you don't have yeah, to you're your up hands, a, like you're, surgeons you're, or yeah, or you're up the top of a pole right. with your hands full of spanners <laughs> and cables <laughs> and you kind of want to see the checklist. I think there's a there's a sort of a longer term point here around um, you know what the kind of you know are we still going to be looking at black plastic rectangles or black glass rectangles in ten years and you know things like glass things like watches things like Magic Leap which you know again we've invested in are interesting as they kind of point to sort of what might happen after um, the black glass rectangle but you know we're kind of a long way away from that at the moment. So so should startups be scared of um, interoperability and uh, should they wait for Google Apple? Samsung, et cetera, to go and create interoperable standards for everything to work together? Or should they kind of blaze the trail forward and try to figure out, you know, is there a killer use case here? I, well, don't, I, think, think, I don't think they should wait. I think they should build their technology to be open, um, a, a scalable. And, and I think Samsung already has an open platform. So there's no reason to wait because consumers know it's out there they're ready for it and i think it's there it's the entrepreneurs opportunity now to take it and prove to consumers that there is a real use case for this yeah i think that's right i mean as i said the challenge is how you articulate what you should be doing with this you know it's the nest story how do you go and give consumers a really clear reason what this is what are you going to put on the shelf in home depot that will sell itself as you walk past it from five feet away, which is that's kind of the challenge here because that's the app store for the Internet of Things. It's, it's certainly the app store for Connected Home. How do you actually, what is your vision for something fantastically cool? Not, well, I bought 150 sensors and I put them in white plastic boxes with wireless connections. Um, here you are. Because that's kind of a lot of what I was seeing at CES. Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, what, one, one person was, was telling me um, that you really need to watch the the bigger manufacturers and the retailers also this year to really see if this is going to be the year for IoT. I mean, if you think about Home Depot, I mean, their revenue is up 30% versus last year. For a $100 billion company, that's that's quite uh, remarkable, actually, to be thinking about it that right that way. And, you know, they were, they were telling me that, you know, in, in some way, shape, or form, like, this is a way for these, uh, you know, big box retailers to actually differentiate against online retailers like Amazon because they've got the, um, the store clerks on the ground that can actually educate consumers on how to actually 
install and and use IoT devices in their home. And so there might be a little bit of an interesting play there in terms of like the end of the, the last mile in terms of getting these devices into consumers' hands. And mm. that that might be something like really a good good way to watch whether IoT is really going to take off this I year. I think that's right. I mean, manufacturers are the ones that are know how to build products. Uh, if you think about the, for example, the self-driving car, Google. Google is doing the self-driving car for its own reasons. They're going to collect a bunch of data and all that stuff that they like to do whereas like a company like bmw knows how to build cars and so if they should they should be the ones uh, that are innovating on the self-driving car and building thinking about the internet of things if you think about it they're the consumers know bmw for their cars yeah it's really interesting the, the whole connected car as part of the iot ecosystem is, is a really fascinating topic i mean google is wading into it apple is wading into it uh, again, BlackBerry launched another uh, platform yesterday for the car. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting to see uh, like so many different players coming into the space. I mean, is this something that we're going to see, Benedict? Like, you know, I think in terms of like, am I going to buy a car? Am I going to buy a car because it has uh, IoT enabled uh, technology? Well, I mean, the car manufacturers have always managed to use accessories and alloy wheels and car sunroofs and what have you as a way of differentiating a car and, you know, getting you to spend $1,000 more on something that costs them 50 bucks. And I think that's certainly part of how they see this stuff. Um, clearly, the kind of the dilemma that they have is that they don't want to end up being kind of disintermediated by a software provider. I'm not entirely sure how real that, that thread is because it's not like, you know, a TV set where the elemental functionality moves into the software or a smartphone where the elemental functionality moves into the software and the guy who's making the thing gets no say. The car is still basically kind of about driving, at least until we've got self-driving cars. And even then, you know, it's all basically about how you put the bits of metal together. So I don't... Th- think they're going to be squeezed out in quite the same way but I you know to your point I think it's absolutely it's absolutely the case that that screen on the dashboard or how it talks to your phone will will kind of be another piece of added value so Benedict um there were so many devices on display at CES this year are we is that reality are we going to walk back in and see that as reality well I did see the first compelling use case for a curved screen which is on a slot machine which actually made fantastic sense to me (laughs) Otherwise, yeah, I mean, there's always froth and there's always stuff that doesn't happen. So, you know, 3D never really happened, for example. I think there's an oddity here, as I said earlier, in that generally the way it works is you have this shining vision of the wonderful thing and the technology doesn't quite live up to it for years and years and years. Whereas because all the stuff got made for smartphones first, all the components got made for smartphones first, you've got all the products and they all work. It's just that you haven't really, no one's really able to articulate what they should do or why you would buy them or how they would work together. And so you've got, sort of thun- vast thundering herds piling into fitness sensors as like a wearable that might make some sense. And, you know, maybe next year there won't be a single fitness sensor and maybe next year there won't be a single selfie stick either. Um, but then underneath that, I think, there's this sort of very strong logic behind some of those use cases. You know, the yeah. question is, you know, how you communicate that and how you kind of take that to market and turn that into something that you can sell to a normal person. Absolutely. I mean... IoT is a, is a fascinating space. I think 2015 is going to be a very, very interesting year for both uh, the big incumbents as well as startups. I mean, ranging from the connected home, connected cars, industrial applications, and the like. And so I just wanted to thank uh, Benedict and Preeti for, for being here, and, uh, um, uh, and we're done. Thank you. Thank you.